Let's start out with Ariel, the Little Mermaid herself. Ariel's original design was created by Disney artist Glenn Keane. At the beginning, Disney executives wanted her hair to be blonde, because, well, that had kind of been the norm for mermaids in fantasy illustrations at the time. However, it was stated that the color red would be a better contrast to her green tail color. Not to mention, it was easier to darken red for when Ariel was in the shadows, opposed to darkening blonde hair. Also, there was already enough blonde Disney mermaids going around with the movie Splash being released a few years prior. So the red hair for Ariel was kept for the final design. However, the green tint of her tail didn't come from any existing shade of green Disney artists had on file. So a new green had to be added to their palette. They named this new green Ariel. During the story development, Ariel was going to have a dolphin friend named Breaker. Apparently, this character would have taken the place of Flounder. When he was removed from the movie, some of his lines were given to Ariel. More than likely, this was because the character of Breaker was described as energetic, and that more matches Ariel than Flounder. When Ariel climbs up on Prince Eric's ship and sees the crew dancing, all of them were designed to be caricatures of people who worked on the movie. During King Triton's introduction, when he soars over the crowd, at certain points you can see some things that stand out. Kermit the Frog can be seen sitting in the audience, along with Goofy, Donald Duck, and Mickey Mouse. A merman is wearing sunglasses, another with what appears to be antennas on his head, and a few attendees wearing Mickey ears. While we're on the subject of cameos, during the wedding scene, when the camera pans over the crowd, you can see the King and Grand Duke from Cinderella. Also, in the Under the Sea sequence, Mr. Lippet from the 1964 The Incredible Mr. Lippet is shown during the song's finale. Jodie Benson is the voice of Ariel, and one of the reasons that she was chosen for the role is because the creators wanted Ariel's acting voice and her singing voice to be done by the same person. When she recorded the lines for the song Part of Your World, she sang it in a dimly lit recording studio to help simulate being under the sea. It's hard to believe now, but the song Part of Your World was almost cut from the movie. This was because of a poor test screening with fidgeting kids. It was believed by the producer that it slowed down the story. Knowing that they had a classic on their hands, the crew argued that the song Somewhere Over the Rainbow was almost cut from The Wizard of Oz. This convinced the higher-ups to give it another screening, and luckily, it was a success. The shark that chases Ariel and Flounder around is named Glut. It never comes up in the movie, though. He was supposed to return in a later scene and he would have been defeated by Flounder, but it was cut. It is common for Disney to reuse animation from other productions to cut down on cost. During the Kiss the Girl scene, the reeds blowing in the wind are reused from the 1937 short The Old Mill. There was an alternate song that the sailors were going to sing at the beginning of the film. It was going to tell the backstory of King Triton and Ursula, but because it took up more time than was necessary, it was removed and replaced with the song Fathoms Below. Speaking of Ursula, her design was based off the appearance of drag show personality, Divine. As for her speaking voice, the creators originally wanted Golden Girls actor B. Arthur for the part, but she turned it down, so Pat Carroll was cast and became one of the most iconic voices in Disney history. There's actually a misconception when people refer to Ursula as an octopus. In fact, she is not half octopus, but half squid, since octopuses, or is it octopi? Uh, whichever. <laughs> they have eight tentacles, but Ursula only has six, just like a squid. At the end of the movie, when Ariel is sitting on the rock, it is mirroring the mermaid statue in Copenhagen, which is based off the Hans Christian Andersen's original. Kenneth Mars does the voice of King Triton, but did you know that before he was cast, the role was offered to Patrick Stewart? He turned it down because it conflicted with his shooting schedule with Star Trek The Next Generation. All of Ariel's sisters have names that begin with A and end with A. Arista, Atina, Adela, Alana, Andrina, and Aquata. Some of them have interesting inspirations for their names. Atina was inspired by a musical that songwriter Alan Minken wrote called Atina, Evil Queen of the Galaxy. Sounds like a fun one. Alan Minken was also the inspiration for Alana's name, which could be interpreted as the female version of Alan. Arista gets her name from the record company Arista Records Incorporated. And Andrina was the name of director Ron Clemens' aerobics instructor. Originally, Aquata was the oldest, but when the third Little Mermaid movie came out, Atina was retconned to be the oldest, meaning that after King Triton, she is the heir to the Atlantean throne. It has kind of become notorious that the VH cover has a certain, um, phallic-looking tower as part of King Triton's palace. The original artist claims that it wasn't intentional, but for years when I was a kid, it every now and then got brought up on the playground at school. 
And since we're already in dirty territory, in the original cut of the film, the clergyman has um, a certain bulge in his pants. The animators claim that his character design was that of an old scrawny man with weak knees, and the bulge that everyone saw was his kneecaps. Unfortunately, it didn't look like that, so when the movie was re-released on Blu-ray, it was removed. However, other scenes weren't touched up, and you can clearly see that, yes, he was intended to have bony knees. Thank you for joining me on this look into the secrets of one of Disney's most popular movies. Are there any secrets or facts I didn't mention? Leave them in the comments below. I'm Kyle Universe, see you out there. Oh.